crown and you're glowing now. But even though you shine, it doesn't mean that you're fine. Oh, please introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was a very wonderful introduction. <laughs> What's your name? TF House. Okay. From Toronto, 24 years old. And yeah, once again, man, thank you for having me, man. It's been a it's been a long time coming, but I'm happy to be here, and I mm -hmm. think the time is right. Tell us about what are some of the unforgettable experiences that you had in 2012, oh. <laughs> man. Wow. Well, Superior Taste was was released in uh, 2011, mm -hmm. and that was like a. Uh, my best project to date and it kind of opened up some opportunities i got to like tour and open up for like with khalifa and mac mm -hmm. um and a few other artists and it was cool it was cool so i kind of rode that way for a while just to learn as much as i possibly could about other artists doing shows with them seeing how they develop and how they're growing and stuff like that mm -hmm. um so i took the year to just kind of like ride the wave do the shows get better as a performer and uh just uh, towards the end of 2011, I started really working on the next project, mm -hmm. um, trying to get my, you know, my head around the ideas and you know the direction of where it was gonna go. I, did, I wanted to, I wanted to make something where you couldn't really hear my influences as much as you used to be able to. Mm -hmm. So like on, on my way in Superior Taste, like you can, there's a lot of comparisons you can compare to a lot of people because I was really wearing that on my sleeve. But mm -hmm. with this new stuff, I wanted to make sure that you know it was fresh and new and like I, I, that I had my own like sound cultivated in it you know definitely and yeah. we we're going to talk about the production and where you're headed in the mm -hmm. sound as well too mm -hmm. uh so but when you're opening uh, up for mac miller and yeah. Louis khalifa that's like thousands of people at one time yeah, you know I mean? yeah. some artists take some decades <laughs> and that or they never get the chance to yeah, get to totally, that so totally. how, what does that do to your life performance when you got yeah. a thousand people well, in yeah front of i you? agree man it, it was yeah. totally a blessing to be honest but mm -hmm. like there were it was it was cool man because I, I literally went from, you know, doing shows with like 30, 40, 50 people, which is, I mean, I love doing that stuff, you know what I mean? But it, it went from literally that to like 2,000 people every night for like two, two and a half weeks, something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So at first it was kind of like overwhelming because you're just not used to the environment and the energy, right? But I mm -hmm. learned so much through that process, you know what I mean? Every night it was like, it was kind of like a taste of what it was like to do it full time mm -hmm. without sleeping without eating and like every day you wake up in the next town that you're that you're hitting up you know? uh so we're gonna get into the first track we're gonna play pl play your part yeah, yeah tell us about this yeah track. this is uh the first uh the first song that i released from young desperado that i felt comfortable with um it's produced by uh omari jabari mm -hmm. from the nobodies from toronto producer coming up shout out to him um but yeah this is a, it's a song that i felt most comfortable with going into the new direction so mm -hmm. i'm happy with this play your part on your website uh, i think there's a couple of uh, uh shots of the you, you shot a video for yeah yeah we recently shot a video. Yeah, yeah, the video's gonna be super sick. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> happy about it. Um, yeah, we shot the video a couple weeks ago. I put the photos up. Um, this is gonna be the first like official single from the tape. So look out for that. TFHouse.ca and we'll find out there. I pull up in the spot. And these bitches can't doubt Ninety four point nine C H R W the come up show. That's the homie T F House. How you feeling, man? I feel amazing right now. Actually. How's it feel to hearing music on the radio like that? This man? this is the second time that it's happened to me. So <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> nice. It, feels, it feels amazing. Though. Hopefully, happens countless. Times yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's the goal. Right? Like uh, I have the advantage that I'm like an independent artist right now that I can mm -hmm. kind of just do whatever I want. So mm -hmm. with this, it was just I wanted to make a collection of songs. I, whatever anyone else wants to label it as, they can label it, it as whatever they want. But mm -hmm. for me, it's a collection of music that embodies a certain, you know, feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about for me. And, and nowadays, it seems like it's even harder to tell what is a mixtape or what is. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like the term mixtape because okay. it's not like like it's not like there's a DJ on it like mixing it and like shouting on it and whatever. It's more you know touched and and a little bit cleaner than that. Mixtapes so, aren't mixtapes. But yeah, but I didn't spend like $10,000 making it on in, in, in a super studio or anything like that, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, like a independent album. In, in, in the of rap music and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very vague. Of, of rap music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I was just taking uh, the Twitter. Uh, Kit knows, you, you know who that is. Yeah, yeah, uh, he said on Twitter, uh, he, he copied your performance, I believe it was at the Crawford, and this uh -huh. is what he said. Last night, sounded like TF House has been uh, tweaking his, uh, his last few tracks to a new level. Uh -huh. This Young Desperado project is going to be stupid. Yeah, that's how I feel too. So, tell us, <laughs> sonically, where, where you're headed in your sound as well yeah, too. It's, I think people... I 
I mean with the song that we're going to premiere here later, I think people will really understand how aggressive it, it's become. You know what I mean? Cause for me, Young Desperado was basically about uh, kind of being desperate for just about everything that you really desire, whether it's like emotions, love, money, whatever it is. It's like that extreme point of desperation where you're willing to like do anything to obtain Mm -hmm. those feelings or that money or whatever it is that you kind of like have your eye on right so mm -hmm. this whole thing like it, it's it's aggressive romantically it's aggressive like just on, on the hood sense of like super rapperness and all that kind of stuff so overall this the aggression is like very clear and evident uh, in, in comparison to my older stuff that was like more like mm -hmm. chill hi guy you know <laughs> like uh, i love the world rap type of stuff you know? like, <laughs> so now now it's just like it, it's, there's a lot of different messages in here but yeah mm -hmm. the main thing is just you know that that point where you're just willing to sacrifice anything to get what you want People need if you want to be successful, that's the killer, you, you have to sacrifice. The thing is, you have to you have to be able be willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's the first step, and then you have to also be willing to deal with the emotional turmoil of sacrificing, right? So it's like you, you let go of something, and then you also have to deal with the consequences of feeling like, damn, was it is it going to be worth it? I hope so, mm -hmm. but when the rewards aren't coming in immediately, you start to like, you know, damn, was I supposed to do that? You know, yeah. so. That there's an art to it. You have to like pick and choose what you do sacrifice, but you have to be willing to also, you know, just deal with the emotional turmoil mm -hmm. after you, you know, sacrifice whatever it is that you have to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I've I've learned that uh, we don't regret the things that we've done. We regret the things that we haven't done. Exactly. Like the actions exactly. that we haven't taken for in sure, this world sure. too, right? That's why if you if you have that perspective overall, then you know you'll be good mm -hmm. on your journey. You know. Definitely. Yeah. So you, you, I, I think what you talk about, like the, the desperation and like really wanting something mm -hmm. and doing whatever you can, mm -hmm. I, I, that's really reflective of how the culture is nowadays. Yeah. Would you not think so? For, for sh in a good way and in a bad way, you know, because like, the, like these plat social platforms and stuff like that, they make it really easy for really hungry artists to be really annoying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're Twittering a thousand mm -hmm. things, you're Instagramming a thousand things, you're mentioning a thousand people. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's very easily... It's very easy. It's very possible for you to look depressed, <laughs> and, and and to look like you're really hungry for it. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. but this is more about, I guess, the the humble element of it. You know what I mean? Trying to expose when an artist is actually desperate and the emotional mm -hmm. effects of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not so much like hit me up, hit me up, hit me up, follow me, follow me, follow yeah. me. You know? like, it's more so like the emotional issue that you kind of because have to people it. find that first that what you just said that yeah. that annoying and yeah, no, no yeah. one likes you know when someone's desperate they yeah, don't want to yeah, help yeah, you but like yeah. i think you're talking about the honesty yeah, yeah. Of, a, of an artist exactly and, exactly and then right. people obviously will connect to that yeah. as well and too. that's why it took so long to make this thing because it was hard to like embody like, it's hard to like pervade like to get that message out there mm -hmm. and and not make it corny and not make it like you know seem a little bit cheesy you know so it was mm -hmm. a lot of through the production through the writing through everything there was a lot of effort that was put into this and a long time to really get it mm -hmm. to sound like it's a message that should be heard right now but i feel amazing about it yeah. you feel good it's amazing the, it's, and I, I actually mac funny enough mac miller he was in london a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago and he's talking about this next album that he has coming out yeah. it's the most honest thing yeah. that he's released is, is gonna release yeah for sure and i i find when artists do that there's a certain level of security that you hope they take it the right right way totally, and they accept yeah. it do you feel yeah. that the same way with this project as well too yeah yeah but when i mean when you hear it put it this way like the, the ignorance on it <laughs> is is aggressive you know what i mean <laughs> like I, I say some really outlandish stuff on there you know what i mean but when i'm being vulnerable it's also really aggressive i'm literally letting it all out you know what i mean when i sound depressed on it i'm mm -hmm. it's very aggressive at the same time so when i mean the aggression is there doesn't mean that i'm just like being ignorant about the whole tape it just means kind of every element of my emotions that i'm really trying to get out there sounds it's a lot more aggressive like i mm -hmm. really mean it like everything it's, yeah, yeah. it's coming from a real place yeah like, yeah it's a very very honest honest mm -hmm. place so i mean a lot of people i hope people take that in and are willing to embrace it some people might just find it maybe over the top i don't mm -hmm. know but that's up to the people that are listening to it uh, so. what, what do you have planned for this year 20 uh 2013 what are your goals uh my number one goal is to stop taking so damn long to make music <laughs> that's my issue right now <laughs> so after after yd or young desperado is out just keep making music like try to try to make the process quicker you know, mm -hmm. I, by any means, you know. I just, I just, I want to keep being able to put music out there as fast as possible. I took when you say put music out, are you mean like a freestyle every week or? Oh no, no, just, just, just more <laughs> projects. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to put out one mixtape a, a year. You know, no. <laughs> pretty much. You know, like it's the beginning of the year. Yeah. Whitey's gonna be out very, very, very soon, and then mm -hmm. I want to just keep it going. You know, new music, mm -hmm. maybe a mixtape in the summer, maybe you know after cool. that. Just I want, I want, I want to, I want to have my catalog. You know, 
really epic, you know? Mm -hmm. I, right now I have like 20, 30 songs to my name, you know? I want to be able to have like An you know, 50, 60, 70 songs. That's pretty much just improved my catalog. Yeah. Definitely. I don't, was it J. Cole? Because I remember like in one song where, like, you know, people are always expecting music from J. Cole, but like mm -hmm. him as well, too. He doesn't release music all the time. Yeah, yeah, he takes but his time. Yeah. He takes his time as well, too, and, it, and I find that it works for him. Yeah, totally. It's, yeah. it's really important because, like, I mean, the, the audience now are, they're very demanding they get mm -hmm. essentially whatever they want mm -hmm. free music all the time free yeah. whatever like so they, they, they it's good to reward them but they shouldn't be controlling <laughs> your art you know mm -hmm. what I mean so like I still feel like I'm gonna take my time the way I feel I need to it's just mm -hmm. just be more efficient in the studio you know okay. definitely yeah, that's pretty much it so it's hard to learn that dope man so you know, how are you feeling now of being from uh, as a Toronto artist from I, mean, I love Toronto man I love it I love it so much it's, mm -hmm. it, it means a lot because it the, the wave that's happening right now in Toronto like mm -hmm. it's I, I feel really like honored to be even considered a part of it in any way you know what I mean because mm -hmm. there's so much potent talent out of the city right like mm -hmm. and it, it, it's essentially Toronto's I guess time now you know I feel yeah. like every other major city has had their like era or continues to like just always be a melting pot of like music and creativity yeah. mm -hmm. but I think really this this generation of Toronto artists is really like the the calling pretty mm -hmm. much you know what I mean I've had these discussions before now musically Toronto is making mm -hmm. some of the best music in the world but mm -hmm. what do you think in terms of the business the infrastructure is there any progress being made there like how come uh, it hasn't caught up I, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, well, yeah, th my opinion, here you go. <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of artists in Toronto, but not a lot of, like, facilitators, not a lot of managers, lot of, not a lot of, like, mediators, not a lot of media platforms and social networks in, Tor in Toronto mm -hmm. to build these artists. You know, I think there's a lot of talented artists, but I think, yeah, the infrastructure isn't strong to support them, you know? So I think mm -hmm. that we, there needs to be more managers, more people with, you know, more pull, more, you know, more stronger mm -hmm. leaders in the industry in mm -hmm. Toronto, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But there's tons of, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of artists, like mm -hmm. underground artists that I know that are mm -hmm. amazing, you know? Yeah. But there just needs to be more mediators, people that work with artists mm -hmm. and labels or with mm -hmm. artists and the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like there, there aren't enough of that in Toronto and that's where like the I guess the connection is being kind of lost, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think in time, like the, the Toronto industry is building. You know what I mean? With more artists, with more success, these positions are going to be created. More people are going to take them. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's inevitable. But I feel like if if there could be more of that, then we'd be seeing a lot of more artists from Toronto get the shine that they deserve. Yeah. Definitely. So now from the fan base aspect though, like, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about this last time when we did the weekend show because yeah, yeah. we had girls, like, I don't know if Going they were London crazy. girls or anything, <laughs> but they had TF House t-shirts mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're building up a fan base yeah. as well. So tell us about TF House fans. Yeah, I'll, it's kind of like, I, I like to consider it more of like a cult thing right now. It's like, I, I don't, I don't, That's even cooler, yeah, man. I, I love it. I love that stuff. Because like me and my boys, when we were watching movies and stuff like that, we, we always watch the most obscure, random, like mm -hmm. horrifying movies that no one really likes to watch or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I kind of like, I take that in pride that my audience right now is kind of like that. Like mm -hmm. I'm kind of like this obscure, trippy rapper dude that some people like. Yeah. So I'm down with that. Like, I, I really like it. So, and it, and this and this usually happens in the beginning of an artist, like when they're, they're coming up, when yeah. they're obscure. Yeah, yeah. Do you see when yourself getting more success and becoming mm -hmm. more popular that you're gonna get? Oh, I'm just gonna TF, do TF. some weird stuff. No, what? <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Don't change. No, Don't no, change. no, no pop stuff over here, bro. No, yeah. No. I'm too. Yeah. Nah, no, that's not me. <laughs> I, 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 I put it this way. I insult people like that so much that I would be such a jerk to like do that right? <laughs> like, hypocritical like jerk you know, so I you hate on yourself I, I, yeah, you hate on just, yourself after like, like me like man we roast a lot so it's just like <laughs> why would I do that and put myself in like you know fire mm. so mm. <laughs> I'll continue to make really hot fire music so. fire <laughs> Young Desperado the track uh are we premiering this? Are you play this? This is the first time oh, mm -hmm. anyone has really ever heard this. Oh, yeah, exclusive. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's, this song has been kind of like kept under wraps between, you know, the crew, Destroy. Shout out to them, by the way, dstry.ca for anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been kind of kept between us and the people that have been making it. But this is like the, this is the title track, obviously. And mm -hmm. this kind of like sums up the entire project and message to a T. It's like kind of like this poke post-apocalyptic like super hardcore love 
song? Not really. Yeah, yeah. Love song? It's trippy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there's so many messages happening happening in it. It's just yeah. hard to like really pull. But it's, it's mm-hmm. more just of a story. Like it's not about me personally. It's not about anyone. But it's okay. just like a story that I feel like people want to listen to and uh-huh. will take in. So yeah. And how did you arrive at this uh, the, the title track? I mean, like the the, the name of the project, yeah. like Desperado. Yeah. Um. That's where I was at. And I am still currently at, you know, after Superior Taste dropped and uh, we were on this kind of amazing ride of like opportunity, you know what I mean? Opening for Mac, opening for Wiz, opening for just about anybody who came into town. And mm-hmm. uh, I felt, yeah, this stuff is amazing, but that's not me yet. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm supporting these acts. I'm, I'm you know, and I love it. It's a, it's a blessing to be doing it. You know what I mean? But that's not where I'm at. And I just really got super hungry. I was like, I can't be this close to it and not get there you know what i mean so mm-hmm. that desperation kind of like started from there and i was just like man yeah i'm a young dude and i'm not gonna i'm not ashamed to be like i am desperate to be there mm-hmm. you know i'm i'm desperate to get everything that i want and i feel like if you're not then your drive is kind of not the same as someone else i've been trying to show you everything is changing you've been skeptic since i know you now you see for yourself look at the t-